What's the haps? I'm John, aka Maroka, and welcome to Spiral Spiel! We're here in Iron Clover Tier 3, which I'm not even sure what the theme is. A little quick look at the map, see if we can figure that one out. Uh, fire, I suspect. Though there's a mixture of other odds and swords, and we've got some... Uh, well, we've got some green levels, because we love the green levels. If one has a quick sneaky peek at my energy, yeah, this is actually take two of the video this week. I was really unhappy with the first take. So let's try not to die by doing an easier, a slightly easier level. Because, um, yeah, if I do the hard levels, I'll run out of energy and then I won't be able to make a video. Well, I could. I've got CE, but I don't want to use that. No, not unless strictly necessary. So first up, obviously, Kickstarter news. Kickstarter's still running. We've still got a shade under two weeks left on that. Kickstarter is going well, though. We are at 91% of our first goal, the £330 first main target, at which point we are technically funded. Uh, I wouldn't be happy with that, though. Nobody would be happy with Well, as I suspect, a few people would be happy just getting £300, but... Um, no, uh, we, we need more. We need more rooms. We need to do more things with our Kickstarter. I mean, it would be very nice to have the big screen, but I would very much like the rock band room, uh, the tabletop room, and uh, the Johann Sebastian Joust room. After all that talk about developers last week, I'd sort of, I've now been toying with the thoughts, could I get someone to sponsor that room? I don't know. That's just, just an idle thought more than anything else. Whether I could or not, who knows. I mean, it's certainly a thought if we can't get other fans to support the event they claim to love. If you claim to love it and haven't give, haven't pledged your support yet, why not? What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for us to create a mediocre event because not, not enough people supported us? Is that what you're waiting for? I thought so. You wanted to see us ruined, don't you? No, I'm sure you don't, but... Yeah. I'd like to see, I'd like to see actual support, people. Please... Please help us. Help us make the event great that you you so badly want to see. At least you claim you want to see. Anyway, yep, that's £302 so far, and we appreciate every penny of that, but we don't see a penny of that until we hit the 330 mark. And then we don't actually see all of that because Kickstarter get their 10% or so cut of that. Which is a bit of a bummer, but hey ho. That's just... That's how it goes. So, uh, Saturday been making a... Last Saturday made a bunch of Kickstarter loot. Just need to get... They've, they've come out really, really nice. So I put some pictures up on Twitter if you've subscribed to me on Twitter. If you're not, go subscribe to me on Twitter. There are some pictures of the stuff I was making on there. They came out really, really nice. Uh, they take a... Took a little bit of elbow grease to get them all finished up and nice and presentable as something I would actually want to be and ha be happy to give to somebody. At the minute, they're kind of rough and a little bit covered in broken glass, which is kind of not a thing I want to give to people as a prize. People don't much like being given a pile of broken glass as a prize. You'll have to have a look at what I made to actually see what I mean. <laughs> I, I'm not literally just giving people a pile of broken glass. Uh, but yeah, they need cleaning up a bit, and they take a lot of work to cleaning, get cleaned up, but I'm trying to find a faster way of doing it. I think I think there are machines which could speed it up, and I will acquire some of them and do it fast instead of... Cause, uh, the, the one I have cleaned up so far took me about an hour of fairly vigorous elbow grease to actually get to the state it's in, and it's still not totally done. So I'm sure a little Dremel with a buffing head on it could kind of cut through the debris and polish it up really nice and make it look really fantastic. I suppose I should actually point out what the heck I'm talking about. It, they're etched glasses, a nice little mixer glasses. You can have a glass of OJ in the morning or a glass of whiskey in the evening. In, or whatever the heck you fancy you want. It can contain any liquid, basically. It's kind of how glasses work. And I've etched a bunch of gaming designs on there, and there's a League of Legends one, which is beautiful! It is literally a work of art. Literally. I took someone's work of art, converted it to a vector image, and stuck it on a glass. It looks fantastic. Check that out. 
a uh, bunch of other stuff. There's uh, there's a Mass Effect one which I kind of put together on a whim, but it came out. That's a really nice one. I kind of just like that a lot, just as a design. So, be making some of them. I want one of them for myself for crying out loud, just because it's really cool. Uh, other Kickstarter things. Uh, I backed uh, probably about an hour ago now. So very, very recently, I backed a Kickstarter that's currently running, got about four days left, worth checking out. It's called God Factory Wingmen. Uh, it's a kind of space-based dogfighter, a little bit like, I don't know if anyone played it, but I played a bit of it back at launch. Uh, Imba Entertainment's Moonbreakers, but theirs was a bit grindy and pay to win. It was a free-to-play game, but they... And technically, it wasn't pay to win because you could get everything in the game by playing it. It just took so long to get it, it was damn near impossible to get anything just by playing the game. You had to pay to get any better spaceships or any kind of upgrades on it. So, yeah. Wasn't that, wasn't that great as a concept. So, this looks like it's an actual good, well balanced, polished game. It can be, and it's going into open alpha for the next month, so if you have a search around you could probably find yourself a download for that pretty easily. Uh, and pick that up and check that out, and back them on Kickstarter because that's a really cool game, and they're not actually at their target yet. So you've got four days to actually actually get that one funded. And I hope they do. I hope they get where they want to be because I want to play that game. Uh, Total Biscuit liked it, and that's a glowing recommendation. If, glowing, uh, if Total Biscuit likes something, you know it's good. So, must be that time of the week again. It's Tuesday evening at time of recording, which means if you go check out the Spiral Knights Facebook page, that means they're putting up screenshots again, which means it must be time for Spiral Knights News. I did that wrong. Spiral Knights News. There we go. I can get the jingle right. I should I should record and sort of maybe auto-tune a jingle or something there. I know when I say that, that usually means I'm immediately going to do that, but I've never auto-tuned anything in my life. I wouldn't know how you do that. It's probably impractical. I, I'll keep the intro. The intro's cool. I like the intro. Could maybe use a little bit more polish, but... Hey anyway, so Spiral Knights news. And obviously Battle Sprites upcoming. The second half of July is still the ETA on that. And we've got more screenshots. We've got a screenshot of the Seraphinx in action. The Seraphinx presumably being a portmanteau of Seraph and Sphinx. Kind of a little angelic flying creature that shoots some holy looking laser at enemies. So it just flies around and shoots lasers. And he's pretty cute. The one thing everyone joked about when they first announced Battle Sprites was, oh, they're making uh, Spiral Knights into Pokemon. And... Well, Seraphinx looks quite a lot like Mew, if I'm honest. I'm like, hang on. I know that was a joke, but it genuinely looks like they genuinely are making Pokemon. So, I I'm keeping my fingers crossed for a Charizard. Seriously. I'm hoping they're going to add a Charizard to the game. Maybe Gyarados. Gyarados is cool as well. Yeah. I, c I could go for those in, those in Spiral Knights. So, a screenshot of that in action. You can have a look at that. And that's more or less it. So, yeah, as usual, ETA is still second half of July. Keep an eye out for that. I will be doing an update video for that. As it seems to be a pretty notable major content update. And it will be worth checking out. I mean, I guess... Dash was supposed to be a major content update, but I don't even remember to use it, so it wasn't major to me, I guess. So, on to other matters. A Not a question I received, but a comment I received on one of my Feed the Beast videos, and it's sort of a sentiment I've heard before from comments and things and people talking on my videos, and it's kind of something I wanted to address because it kind of irks me a little bit. Uh, comment was, and while we've got a moment, no we haven't got a moment here, hang on, let me just smash these guys up, then I can have a moment to talk. It's a lengthy comment. Right, smashy smashy. Okay, so, Sandwich555 says, I'm sorry for you man, you're making so many videos and you're a good talker, you should have more views and subscribers. 
Try making really short videos with funny content, or something like a troll song. That worked for a lot of people. You should open your mind a bit more, tell a story. Obviously a fake one, with you being Superman, dodging tennis balls and singing He-Man songs, just whatever's in your mind. Most absurd and ridiculous thing that you can think of. That's just my thoughts. Paraphrasing that a bit, it was a little bit more broken English, so perhaps that's not his first language. That's forgivable. It's, it's a big old internet out there. Um, and a little bit more colourful language, actually, which I've toned down a bit because this is my channel and it's less colourful language than that. Hi guys! You aren't shooting. Uh, so, why don't I make shorter videos that appeal to a wider audience? Uh, because because I don't. This is what I do. I am I, I am myself in my videos. I'm not putting on a putting on an act. Not making making some oh spikes. This is not some silly show where I pretend to be a character or anything. This is me. This is my channel. I am who I am. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. No wait, no, I'm not. Um, Bing. So. Short content. Yes, it does work for a lot of people. Yes, everybody these days has ADD and can't watch a video that's longer than five minutes long. If it's beyond that, people just turn off. I understand that. But I make, principally, the content I enjoy watching. And uh, there's no reason to not take that pill. So I shall. I make content that I enjoy watching. If you pay much attention to my videos, you'll know the sort of people I tend to watch on YouTube, and that's the kind of content I aim to make, generally speaking. I watch, and I've mentioned these before, and I'll no doubt mention them again in the future, just because I watch them a lot, so I spend a lot, there are a lot of my entertainment value, and part of my life. You know, like people watch TV and we'll talk about the TV shows they watch, I watch a lot of YouTube instead, and I talk about the YouTube I watch. So, the guy that got me into doing Let's Plays, Kurt J. Mack of Farlands or Bust. Uh, he does much longer form, he does, well, he does the same format as Spiral Knights is, basically, I'm, I'm copying him here. I'm totally unoriginal, I'm copying him. Except I'm not doing it as a charity walkathon for a child's play charity. I'm more selfish and I just do this for my own entertainment purposes. So, uh, yeah, leave a thumbs up if you want to turn Spiral Spiel into a charity drive. That'd be an interesting one to see how that one works. Uh, oh, hang on, was that lag? I didn't walk into that. That's not good. Someone's stealing all my internet. Give me my internet back. So, yeah, uh, B00, he does longer form content. I enjoy watching. Generic B does longer form. Um, Total Biscuit does 30, 40 minute sort of game criticism type stuff. Uh, most of the stuff I watch is 30 to 40 minutes long. I watch something that's like the length of a good, solid, full-length TV episode. Not something that's five-minute, bite-sized TV kids cartoon stuff. And as for doing stuff that's funny, I'm not a naturally funny person. I imagine you might have realized this by now. If, 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 you're, if you're subscribed to me, you probably know I'm not a natural comedian. I imagine that maybe at times I can be slightly entertaining. I hope I am. But, um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here cracking jokes all day long because I'm not, I'm not that witty. I'm not a naturally comedic person. More's the pity, I'm sure I'd be a lot more popular and more successful at YouTube if I were, but I'm not. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. I was not naturally gifted as a comedian when I came into this world, sadly. So I do what I do. I do... I, I, I talk and I play games, which is pretty much all I do. That's my life, talking and games. So, yeah, I, can't, I, I wouldn't enjoy doing that. I mean, if I were to try and do that, I'd have to sit and spend ages pretty much writing material or something like that, because, like I say, I'm not naturally witty. Anything I did would have to be written. I wouldn't enjoy doing that because it's not my thing. I've never done that before. I've got no experience in that field. Oh, I didn't realize there were spikes under that. I should look before I leap. So, I've got the wrong sword for the job. It's the wrong sword, Gromit. A new fantasy film in the Wallace and Gromit universe. The wrong sword. So, 
Oh, I got the right sword for you, haven't I? I can take you out. Bam. Ha. So I'm not I'm not going to come up with lots of random silly stuff. I don't make short. F I don't feel like I can get much done in a short video. I know Yogcast is obviously hugely successful in just 15 minute videos, ish. And quite often you'll find that they'll just like record like an hour of content or something and split it up into four video four 15 minute parts or something. You can tell because there's basically the videos if you string them back to back are for the most part fairly seamless. They'll just pick up where they left off and. There's no hello and welcome to the Oxcast. They just jump into it and start talking. At the, the end of the episode, it just cuts off, and it's like, yes, yeah, obviously you just you recorded a lot more content and cut it up. And for the most part, that kind of content, I, for me, silly content, memes and silliness and short content, it almost feels in many cases like pandering to the lowest denominator. And I know, certainly in people who regard themselves as any kind of serious let's play, are doing. Kind of this kind of content, a lot of them don't like, and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out a name here, which is going to be controversial because he's very, very, very popular, very, very, very successful. PewDiePie, PewDiePie. Anybody who is struggling to make it big in YouTube by making any kind of serious content, not by screaming and wailing and swearing and effing and blinding and generally offending people doesn't like PewDiePie and he's made it big by screaming and effing and blinding and the general consensus is that he's, the main part of his audience tends to be on the younger side. This is a man who's appealing to kids by effing and blinding and making a general hysterical mess of himself. <laughs> And it's horrible content. There's videos that do the rounds uh, somewhere. There's one out there at least that I know of, probably multiple, which is Adults Watch PewDiePie. And there's just a montage of people cringing at his content. And it's like, oh my god, is this a real person? And, well, for the love of god, I hope not. I hope it's an act. But at the same time, it's an act which appeals to the lowest common denominator. It's garbage. And certainly not worth my time. If you, if you enjoy it, fine, by all means, go ahead, watch your stuff, but it's not something I want to watch, and good lord, is it not something that I want to make, content-wise. So, that's uh, that's my thoughts on... Tr on it's basically on um, junk food TV, I suppose. It's basically the best way I could describe that. I'm trying, I'm trying to make a healthy, wholesome meal here, and PewDiePie is making junk food, and, you know, if you want to... If, I haven't... I had no sword for a moment there. That was weird. If you want to eat junk food, be my guest, but it's not It's not going to do you any good. Because you might learn something if you watch me occasionally, once in a while. Not all the time, but sometimes. So, yeah, okay, I, um... That's my little rant about the state of my channel and why I don't do what people tell me to because I might get more successful about it. Um, yes, it would be nice to be more successful, but I want to get successful doing what I do and doing it well, not by pandering to the lowest common denominator. If you do actually do, uh, do enjoy my content and want me to get more views and subscribers because you think that's the sort of thing I deserve, the best way you could help me out instead of sort of telling me to do something different because... Surely if I did something different, I wouldn't be making the content you allege to enjoy. That's the weirdest thing for me, is you say you enjoy my content, but uh, tell me to make something different. Well, if I was making something different, it wouldn't be the same content and you wouldn't enjoy it, surely. I would be essentially alienating my audience that I do have in the pursuit of an entirely different audience which enjoys an entirely different type of content. Uh, I don't see how that's, that's, that's a really particularly good idea at all in any way. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, on the on the changing up YouTube channels front, though, uh, this interesting little bit of Google Analytics stuff that I found literally just before I started making this video, which is basically about gaming on YouTube and statistics and demographics and things and um, peak viewing times. Actually, it turns out that most people watch gaming content at 8 p.m by and large, 
Now, I don't know whether it would make a tremendous difference, but my videos tend to go out at 7 p.m. And that's 7 p.m. GMT as well. Um, what have I gone this way? Which one was this way? Is this where I started? Can't remember now. Nope, it's stuffs. So, I'm wondering if maybe, just maybe, I should change the time that my videos go out. If I did it... I don't know, which time zone is the most successful? I like to think Eastern Time, but I don't know. If I were to do it at 8pm GMT minus 5, would that be a better time to get more views? That's the sort of thing I can do to change up my channel without actually changing the format, which that's, that's stuff I don't mind. I don't mind that in the slightest. That's good. Con. That's a good way to run a channel. Not by pandering. Pandering is bad, okay? Unless you're a panda. You're allowed to panda if you're a panda. That, that's basically the extent of my humour, by the way. Terrible, terrible, awful jokes throw and puns put together in the spur of the moment. Don't get any better than this, folks. Don't get any better than this. So, right, where, where, where was I? Um, yeah, the, I'm going to read through that and see what I can make out of that channel, uh, out of that data, and see if I can find ways to improve my channel out of that. That seems like a good bits of information for me to try and use to my advantage. So maybe look for cha changes in the channel like that in the near future. I don't know whether I'm going to make any sweeping changes, but I'm always on the lookout for things to improve things. Improving things is good, but pandering's bad. So, other notable news, well, now that I've finally finished my little rant about my channel. Uh, in the gaming news, last Tuesday saw the launch of the Ouya, which brings us, incidentally, neatly back into Kickstarter a little bit. See, it's, it's, it's all themed, it's all neatly themed. Unfortunately, I can't actually title this episode Kickstarter, because I've already got one titled Kickstarter, which, oh, I just ruined it for myself. So you kickstart a heavy episode inadvertently without actually being able to be called Kickstarter. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Maybe I'll title it Ouya. So Ouya was found, uh, funded on Kickstarter, a sort of Android-based gaming console with a very heavy indie focus. And I didn't back it on Kickstarter. I didn't get the early access or anything like that. I didn't even particularly pay much attention to it until the last week after it launched. And it was Ben Kachera of the Penny Arcade Report wrote a bunch of articles on it. And he was quite compelling. It, he sold it very nicely to me. Basically, the comparisons he made were not of any kind of killer apps. There's nothing on there that will make you go, Ooh, I need to buy this right here and now. There's nothing like that on there. But it's more like if you have any experience with such things, browsing the Xbox Live Indie Game Store... In, uh, Xbox Live... Is, that, is, is it the Indie Game Store? Is it Indie Marketplace, I think is what it's called. Yeah. Uh, either way, basically, you sit down and browse through that, because this is the only way it works. You have to sit down and browse through it, because there's no way to find good content on there, unless you know specifically what you're looking for ahead of time. Uh, and it's mostly utter dross. Anybody can publish almost anything on it. There's a little bit of moderation to get rid of stuff like, you know, outright porn or, you know, hate hate speech and stuff. That kind of thing would get just pulled. But for the most part, uh, for the most part, almost, almost anything goes. And there's a lot of dross. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't really work. There's... Uh, something found the other week was a game about my cat was literally the title of the game. The game included a section which were screenshots, not screenshots, uh, photographs of the game maker's cat. Um, and the game involved a picture of a cat snowboarding down a hill trying to pull off as many stunts as possible to score as many points as possible to get a high score and then by getting a high score you unlocked more pictures of the cat and then there was a page with the description of the cat that the person wrote in which and this is the best bit of the game they describe it as my second favorite pet it's the second favorite it's not even their favorite pet they didn't love their pet enough their most favorite pet to make a game about it they made a game about their second favorite pet that's hilarious 
<laughs> oh, wow. So there's a lot of stuff like that on there, and it's awful. And I don't expect the Ouya to be tremendously better. The first thing I played was a game called Muffin Knight, which looked good. I know why it looked good. I can, fig I can figure that out very, very quickly. It looked good because it was a mobile title that had been ported, and very obviously so, it was a crummy free-to-play title that was just heavy monetization. And basically what it was, was they'd, they'd basically cloned Vlombeer's uh, Super Crate Box, which is free-to-play on Steam, so you can go check that out now. And he's basically just made a game that is free-to-play. There's no monetization, nothing going on there, nothing evil. Nothing nasty, nothing horrible, it's just, here's a game, it's free, pick it up, play it. A little arcade shooter kind of title, absolutely hard as nails, I detest it because it's... Look, Terry Kavanagh makes games which are hard as nails. He made Super Hexagon, he made VVVVVV. V. I don't know how many, v how many V's did I say? Probably not enough. Have a few more V's. VVV. V. So, yeah, VVVVVVV and Super Hexagon are tough, but... Doable. Super Crate Box is horrifyingly tough and not very practically doable. The challenge is like to score 10 points and that's nigh on impossible. Which just pick up 10 crates. I mean, there's too many enemies and the control's a little bit finicky sometimes. And it just doesn't work very well. It's, it's, it, you end up not scoring very much and I don't know how much time you have to spend to get good at it but too much. So, I, I got sidetracked there, yeah, that was free, that was talking about free-to-play titles. Um, so, I'd like to see less of the free-to-play mobile stuff on the Ouya, because that's not good content that I don't want to play. I, I, don't, I don't want crummy free-to-play, heavily monetized dross that's just there to suck money out of you. Uh, but there's a few good things. This Towerfall is a great little sort of four-player arena brawler kind of thing, which is a great little concept. You are a kind of archer, you've got a bow and you start with two arrows and it's 2, 2D arena and you've got to run around, jump and try and shoot the other players with an arrow. If you hit them once, that's it, they're dead, they're out of the game. And I don't know why, but this is the most compelling feature for me. It has ammo. Like I say, you start with two arrows. Once you've shot them, you've got to go and retrieve your arrows out of other players' bodies, out of the walls, out of some supply crates before you can shoot any more arrows. You start the game, you've got two shots, you miss them with those two shots, suddenly you're already running away trying to re reacquire ammo to do it. And it's much better dynamic than if you're just running around just trying to shoot each other. The ammo thing just makes it much more compelling. I don't know why, it just works. It's great. Good little tile. So I'll probably be picking that one up. Uh, some other stuff in there. There was a good little dog fighter. Uh, I forget, forget what it's called. Uh, but it reminded me of very much of a sort of very cartoony kind of Rogue Squadron-like title. That's good in my book. That was no good at it. I'm not great at dogfighters. Don't know why I did back God Factory Wingmen, to be honest. But, um, hey-ho. They're fun. I like uh, dogfighters are fun, even if I'm not really that great at them. I like flying. I'm no good at it. Like many things in life. I like Spiral Knights. I'm no good at it. But I like it. So, yeah. So, uh, Ouya's got a lot of other compelling features. Cause I, I, I didn't realise at first, but um, as as the weekend approached, and I was like, should I buy it, should I buy it, should I buy it, shouldn't I buy it? Um, I kept finding things out about it. It's like, okay, it's getting more and more compelling to buy it. And some of the apps are really cool. You can use it as basically a kind of media server and stream all your videos and music and what have you through there. And a very good selling point for me was that you can use it as a remote desktop for your Windows PC. You can literally pick up your console because it is tiny, it's about three inches big, put it in your bag, take it somewhere else, and then play your PC games through your Ouya wherever you are. Is my theory here. I don't know what latency is like as far as that goes. I imagine obviously you've got all your control inputs and then got to go through the internet, but um, yeah, it seems, seems like a pretty good idea, I think. I'd like to give that a go, try and find out, because that, that sounds like a really cool idea. 
Something I now need to buy, I feel. I feel like I should probably look at getting a semi-decent capture card for the PC so that I can actually record Ouya content, because I would like to start making Ouya videos, because I feel like maybe there is a niche for that at this point in time. It's out. It's not been out more than a week. There can't be a lot of people making good content for it just yet. I want to get in on the ground floor on that particular one. So I shall look for that and try and make Ouya content soon, and you can see the Ouya for yourself. Good console, good console, very good. Uh, I'm sure there was other compelling features and all of a sudden they've gone from my mind. I mean, the portability thing's great, as it is. It works with any controller, pretty much. I need to figure out how, whether, whether or how you can use wired Xbox controllers, because that's what we have most of, but... It does work with the PS3 wireless controllers quite well. It works with the Xbox wired controllers, great. Uh, the default one that comes with the console, I'm not sold on as a thing, but... Um, ergonomically, it's not awful, but there's a little bit of input lag at times done through the Bluetooth it works, and sometimes you'll like press a button or the stick or something, and your character just won't move or won't jump or something and like for like half a second or so, and it's like, well, that's just cost me a life. Things aren't happening when I'm telling it to. Um, it's not really what I wanted from a game. I wanted the game to actually respond to what I'm telling it to do. I don't know if that's going to be patched out. That seems like the sort of thing that might be patchable via firmware and stuff. I hope that gets resolved soon, because I'd hate to have to always use third-party controllers. The Ouya controller itself, the batteries are underneath the faceplate, which is a weird place to put them, but as an added virtue, that means you can then just remove the faceplate, and I'm sure that means you could customise it so easily, because you could just take them off, spray it with... I don't know, whatever colour paint you want. If you want a gold controller, get a gold spray paint, just go over your controller, and suddenly you got a gold controller. That's cool, I like that. You're gonna if you want to do that with an Xbox controller, there would be a lot of unscrewing things involved. And I have taken my Xbox controller apart before. And let me tell you, it's not easy to put back together. That's a tricky beast. There's nowhere nice for the motors that control the rumble to sit. So you kind of have to sort of balance them in place while you're you have to kind of balance them in place while you're trying to screw all the screws in and oh god I'm cursed um which one's oh Polaris isn't cursed that's okay and uh, it's just a very very fiddly and awkward process which you can do eventually but you yeah, like I say just lift the faceplate off do whatever you will with it and put it straight back and I feel like this may be a console that I will bring to the Button Mash event now as well, actually. That's another thought for it. We've now got another console for people to see. So if you want to see the Ouya and haven't bought one yourself or don't know anyone that owns one, why don't you buy a ticket to Button Mash? Because then you can see the Ouya for yourself in person. Hint, hint. Maybe you should go backers on Kickstarter. There will be a link in the description underneath and in the outro. Please do so. So yeah, ooh yeah, and I'm I'm kind of out of topic now, and I just want to finish this level. I'm rambling a bit. What else was a good on the ooh yeah? There must be more games to talk about on that. Let me see what I can think of. There was oh Terry Cavanagh does. I think Terry Cavanagh has put quite a few titles on there, but I couldn't find them all, or many of them, or indeed anything other than one of them, and it had a completely unpronounceable name which was appeared to be mostly a string of random letters, and I do need to check that out because it sounds... well, just, just because of the name. I've no idea what it is. The game the game name gives no clues away because, like I say, it's a very long string of random letters that is completely unpronounceable in the human tongue. Uh, I don't know quite what to make of that. I just want to see what on earth that could possibly be. Oh, and a game I did stumble across. Ooh, coming back to Kickstarter. Ooh, another segue. Coming back to Kickstarter, there was a game I found on there by a developer whose, I suppose, internet pseudonym is Bento Smile. And I know that name, but not as a game developer. Because it's uh, someone I backed on Kickstarter a little while back. 
she is an artist who she's a manga artist and she's got a really adorable kind of chibi style kind of going on and great writer great storyteller beautiful artist i backed her because she was trying to self-publish a book and i got a copy of her book and that literally just arrived in the mail this week and that was kind of a weird experience because I'd, so I'd completely forgotten about that and then just came home on my lunch break one day and suddenly this parcel with the label handwritten on it that I was like, I'll, I have handwritten? That means someone's personally sent this. It's not an Amazon or anything package and then I've got nothing from eBay. So someone's personally taken the time to write out my address and stick it on a parcel. What parcel could possibly have been sent? That's a bit weird. Turns out it was uh, Bento Smile's book, and my cat eye is level 9, cool, getting there, getting there slowly, can almost make it 5 star, soon I hope. So yeah, uh, that's a good book, Pearls and Twine it's called, uh, check uh, that one out, I don't know if you can buy it, I presume you can still buy it to be honest, but yeah, check out Pearls and Twine by Bento Smile. Uh, the way that uh, connects to the story is that she, turns out, she is also a game developer and she's got games on the Ouya. So seeing that name on the Ouya, I was like, hang on a second? We talk about small world and all that. I literally just got her book in the mail this week, and suddenly I'm finding games on the console that I also just bought this week. That's just a really weird coincidence, and kind of cool. So, yeah. It's all about starting damn kicks these days, because everything is kickstarting. Including us, please go backers. So yeah, like I say, if you do have any interest in our event, pl please go check it out. If you have not heard about it, if you have heard about it and are interested in it, please go pledge some money because we are 91% of the way to our primary goal, and that's really great. And I'm hoping we can, I can hoping, I'm hoping we can go further than that. I'm comfortable with that we can actually reach our target, but I'm hoping we can go further. Uh, please do remember to like this video if you liked it because that helps me out a bunch, Put pushes me up in the rankings on searches for stuff. Uh, please subscribe if you're not, if you're enjoying this content. I do make content five days a week, please subscribe. And if you've got anything you want to ask that I might talk about in a future video, questions are always appreciated. They do all go into a big notepad. If I haven't answered a previous question, it will probably be coming at some point in the future because I've got a notepad with them all on that I'll pick something out in the future. So throw your questions in the comments and I'll get around to them at some point soon, hopefully. And I will give you a shout out in connection with it. So, that's that for this week. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure to have you as always. I've been Maroka, and I'll see you next time. Yeah!